those puzzles took me a long time to solve they were good puzzles but damn some of those were hard it is possible that i missed some of them some were really complex especially i'll say the last one was crazy that solve is insane i don't think i'd ever find that in a real game even though i'm pretty good at those i've been solving how to find lethals on hearthstone and find the combos on Yu Gi Oh for ages but magic together is just built differently when it comes to those puzzles it's too many interactions even though the cards seem simple and just Oh, good luck, Shiva. Okay, opponent has a Butcher Ghoul. It has Undie. When it dies, if it had no plus one plus one counters, return it to the battlefield under its owner's control with a plus one plus one counter. Okay, love that card, by the way. I think the first time I saw it was on Return of Everything. Not sure. A Guardian Automaton. When he dies, opponent gains three life. He has Damping Sphere. If I land this tab for two or more mana, it produces Colorless instead of any other type and amount. Okay. Each spell a player casts costs one more to cast for each other spell that player has cast this turn. Okay, so every time I cast a spell, it costs one more. I have Goblin Spy. I play the top card of my library revealed. I have Frontline Devastator. This is from our Devastation. Uh, came right after Amon Cat, one of my favorite sets ever. Love it. Amon Cat and our Devastation is where Nico Bolas released his full power. And I like Nico Bolas, as you can see. He has a flick too. Whenever he becomes blocked, if any player loses two life. And from Line Devastator, gets plus one plus zero until end of turn for two mana. I have three mountains and three forests to tap for mana. I'm about to draw a Blessings of Nature. Distribute four plus one plus one counters among any number of target creatures. It has a miracle cost of one green mana. So when I draw this, I can cast it for one green mana. But but I'm pretty sure that one of these counters needs to go on this goal because then it turns into a 2 2, but it has a counter, so when I kill it, it doesn't come back. I'm pretty sure that's gonna be a trick in here. Electrostatic Bolt it deals 2 damage to target creature. If it's an artifact creature, Electrostatic Bolt deals 4 damage to it instead. Okay, I can probably use that to kill that goal once it has a counter. Intercom, Outer Strain target creature gets plus X, where X is the number of cards in your hand. There's another trick here. Which is the fact that once I cast this, then you may cast this for its miracle cost when you draw it, if it's the first card you drew this turn. So if I draw this and cast, it enters the stack, like the cast itself enters the stack for the miracle cost. And then I can cast this while this is still in my hand. So that this is not in my hand, but this is. So it will be a plus three plus three to a creature. That is interesting. That is interesting. Anyway, then I have a crash. You may sacrifice a mountain instead of paying crash's mana cost to destroy a target artifact. So I can probably tap a mountain. Let's do a quick try at solving this. Uh, so I draw the blessings of nature, cast or trigger, right? Trigger on the miracle. But before it resolves, I cast intercom outer strength, giving plus three plus three to my frontline devastator. Let's say so he turns into a six six. Then I'm gonna let it resolve. And I'm gonna cast Miracle. I'm gonna put one counter in the Butcher Ghoul and three of my Goblin Spy. I bring him to 4 4. So I have a 4 4 and a 6 6. That is three mana from the Intercom Outer Strength, one mana from the Blessings of Nature. But uh, each spell player cast costs one more to cast which other spell players cast this turn. So I already cast those two. So my Electrostatic Bolt will be too pricey. And I can, uh, so I can sacrifice one of my mountains that I already tapped to pay for Crash but when i pay for crash i also gotta pay two more mana because of this rule here to increase the casting cost for any cards alternative casting cost so i would be out of mana already and i wouldn't be able to kill the butcher goal i think i got it okay so i go to my draw phase miracle goes on the stack in response i cast inner calm tapping two forests in the mountain okay blessings of nature is still in my hand even though the miracle is on the stack. So I give plus three plus three to my frontline devastator, turning it into a six six. Intercom resolves and I cast Crash. With Blessings of Nature still on the stack, I need to tap one mountain to cast Crash and sacrifice the other mountain that I already tapped because Damping Sphere, I still gotta pay extra mana when I'm casting the, the alternative mana cost. With Crash, I target Damping Sphere and kill it. And then uh, I still have one green mana and one red mana left. And then Pinsphere is not on play anymore. I tap one green mana for to pay the miracle cost on Blessings of Nature. I put one counter on Butcher Goo, three counters on my Goblin Spy, bringing it to a 4-4. Four, four. And then I cast with my last red mana, Electrostatic Bolt, targeting the Butcher Goo. When I target Butcher Goo, it dies and does not come back. It doesn't come back because it already has a plus one plus one counter that I put on it. And then I attack with Frontline Devastator and Goblin Spy. Uh, if he blocks the Frontline Devastator, he's gonna take two from the Afflict and four from the goblet uh, doing six damage 
and uh, he wouldn't gain life in time because uh, the damage to him will trigger on the stack before the gain free life from the guardian automaton triggers so if i had used the electrostatic bolt to kill the guardian he would gain the tree life and then just block the frontline devastator with his butcher ghoul take six damage and be a tree life which would give him another turn which is against the puzzle rules so i gotta bolt the butcher ghoul bolt the bird and if he blocks the frontline devastator he takes six damage if he blocks the goblin spy he still takes six damage he does not gain health in time with the guardian automaton and i'm pretty sure that's the soul the problem that we have here is that platinum angel has an effect called you cannot lose the game and your opponents cannot win the game so you need to get rid of that 4-4 angel so what do we have for us we have fungal reaches with no storage counters uh fungal reaches has two effects i can put storage counters on it or remove x storage counters from fungal reaches and add x mana in any combination of red or green we have a river of tears that i can add blue if you play the land this turn add black instead we have the caves of coilus which add colorless or i can tap it to add either white or black and this is one damage to myself i have a nimbus maze that add colorless tap for white if i control island tap for blue if i control planes and i have this legacy weapon that for five mana can remove a target permanent from the game if legacy weapon will be put into your graveyard from anywhere review legacy weapon and shuffle it into the solar library instead then lastly uh, by the way you gotta love Ur with a uh, quorum here this art is great i think like my honest opinion really like this anyway uh we have in our hand a watery grave it enters the battlefield you may pay two life if you don't it enters the battlefield tap we have a talisman of impulse it has a scarless or a red or green it deals one damage to me and we have a mana crypt at the beginning of your upkeep flip a coin if you lose the flip mana crypt deals true damage to you uh this doesn't matter because it's not the beginning of my upkeep so i can always cast this right to colorless so how do i go about solving this uh i think that what i need to do is and let me get some counters for this one actually so i would cast mana crypt for zero mana and tap it to add two colorless mana so i have two colorless mana floating my objective in here by the way is clearly to cast the legacy weapon at cost five so this is my first try i'd cast the mana crypt then i cast the talisman of impulse and i have only three health so i guess i'm gonna count that with a dice here because several of those lands require me to take damage so i'm gonna cast the talisman of impulse and spend two mana to generate either green or red i don't know which one yet either green or red from that amulet then in order to put down the water grave i cannot pay the, the land from the water grave but it is an island swamp since i control an island it means i can make a white from nimbus maze so nimbus maze makes a white if i play a land i can sacrifice the city of traders did i sacrifice the city of traders because i did play a land let's do that and add two more colorless then i can pay one colorless to put a storage counter in fungal reaches and tap it and pay one more to remove the counter and add either green or red so i will have one green and one red one from fungal reaches and one from talisman of impulse then the river of tears i already played the land so i add a black from river of tears and i'm still missing a blue how do i get a blue oh so i need to target the river of tears first okay and i think i got it first of all i'm at three health i am going to go down to two health to tap my caves of coilus to give me a black mana and then i'm gonna cast my mana crypt for free and add two colorless mana they are right here okay i'm gonna use the two colorless mana to cast my talisman of impulse when he comes in i'm gonna tap him for a red mana going down to one health then i am going to add a blue mana from river of tears right river of tears with a blue mana i am then going to play my watery grave tap but before tap the city of traders for two colorless mana because it will get sacrificed two colorless mana enter the field i'm gonna use one colorless mana to tap my fungal riches and add one storage counter and i'm gonna use the other colorless mana to make a green mana by removing my storage counter and making one green mana and lastly i have an island on the field now because my watery grave grave is an island and a swamp and it just entered the field so i'm gonna tap nimbus maze to add a white mana having five mana total and one health left i spend this five mana to cast legacy weapon removing a target permanent from the game targeting the enemy platinum angel cast legacy weapon target platinum angel platinum angel at the end of my trigger leaves the battlefield and opponent loses the game i am at one health left this is a really fun puzzle i really liked it so opponent has a jingy taxes with a 5-4 and is at 23 health i have a free death speeder deals two damage to an opponent whenever it takes a damage nibbles of dusk has prowess and flying is a 2-1 
Uh, Supreme Phantom has flying and other spirits get plus one plus one. Need use of the skills of spirits, so gets plus one plus one. In Pyrohemia, I can pay one red mana and deal one damage to each creature and player. At the beginning of the end step, if no creatures on the battlefield, I sacrifice Pyrohemia. I have five red mana and two water grays that can tap for both blue and black. On my hand, I have Dark Withering that destroys a target non-black creature. Also has a madness cost of one, meaning if I discard it, I cast it for one black mana. And same for Alms of the Vein. If I discard it, I cast it for one black mana, which does target opponent loses 3 life and you gain 3 life. And they also have a Tarngarth's Rage. If enchanted creature is attacking, it gets plus 3, plus 0. Otherwise, it gets minus 2, minus 1. And Jengi Taxes has an effect which my maximum hand size is reduced by 7, which means I'm gonna discard all my cards at the end of the turn. You begin by casting the Rage on Niblis. You're gonna trigger Niblis Prowess. So he's a 2 2 creature currently because of the Supreme Phantom and become 7 3 attacks. And then you attack. You attack with Niblis and the Supreme Phantom. An opponent drops down to 15 really fast. This is the easy part, okay? Now activate the Parahemia once. Because the opponent should take one damage. As a result, the Enrage inflicts two more damage to the opponent. Enrage from the Field Death Spear, by the way. And my life total is now four. When I proceed to the end step, if I am correct with the way the rulings work, I would first discard my hand because of King Taxes. So I have the priority of discarding my hand. Once I discard my hand, the prowess trigger ends on Niblis, but he still survives, and all damage is removed from creatures. And then the madness triggers both go on the stack as I cast them, tapping my watery graves. Niblis survives as a 1 1 because of the Supreme Phantom. Now, I'm gonna cast both cards for the madness cost, and that's where it starts to get a little bit funky. I put Withering on the bottom of the stack. Withering is targeting Supreme Phantom. Two prowess go up, making Niblis into a 3 3. Alms resolve, alms of the vein. It causes the opponent to lose three life and I gain three life, so I go to seven. Opponent goes to nine. With withering still on the stack, I will activate Pyrohemia again, dealing three more damage to the opponent, bringing him to six, and one damage to myself, bringing me to six. The reason Pyrohemia does three damage is because it's one from Pyrohemia and two from Fuel Death Spear. And Death Spear survives. He survives because we already had a cleanup step. Since Shari had a cleanup step, his health was full. But Pyrohemia can activate whenever I want. So Wither is going to resolve killing the Supreme Phantom. And my Nibblis of Dust is going to be a 2-2 because of the prowess. But the stack is empty. A few things happens when the stack empties up. We have the resolve of the cleanup step, which means that all prowess triggers are taken from the Nibblis of Dusk. Bring him to 0-0 zero, zero and he dies. Okay, when the, those take base actions are checked. And I think that as those state based actions are executed, we have another round of priority, like first mid and opponent. And I take this opportunity and I get priority to activate Pyrohemia twice more, killing my pure death spear that is not full health again because he regen once you had another round of priority. So that will deal the final six damage to the opponent, killing him, bring me to like four health. And that is the only solve I could find. This took really long. This is the hardest puzzle I have ever seen, like 100%. I have never seen a puzzle this hard.